this film, in paying tribute to John Glenn, also pays tribute to the best in American life. I thought I wanted to be a doctor, and that's what I was studying in college. And then World War II came along, and I'm in the middle of my junior year. And so I left and went into a military flight training at that time. So that changed the direction of my life completely. We've known each other since we were uh, two years old, so I guess it was in uh, the eighth grade. It got, it got sort of serious. Oh. <laughs> I got hit several times. World War II got hit five times, just by, mainly by single shells. Seven times in Korea, and uh, three of those were big ones. Three of those were explosive shells. I'll, I'll clean it up. I'll say the old magnet tail was what they uh, they called me, and you can make your own version of that. <laughs> I was very afraid to let him go up because, uh, uh, well, way back then. I, I even had to learn how to spell uh, uh, the word astronaut because <laughs> uh, there wasn't any, yeah. any words. So everything was so, so, so new. About a month before the flight, I got thinking if, if I had to make an emergency reentry and came down, and here I am over Papua New Guinea, and some of the natives are there, and they all at once they hear a boom, boom, a sonic boom, and they look up, and here comes this little black thing, and all at once the hatch blows off on the side, and out steps this thing in a silver suit. I'm probably going to be either elected god or chief, or be dead pretty quick, one or the other. And so I had a message translated. Uh, you know, take me to your leader, big reward and all this sort of thing. And this is a little lesson for all of us, I think, today, too. It turned out that the word for stranger and the word for enemy was the same word. In other words, if you don't know somebody, they're automatically an enemy. And by the second time, when I went up, it was some 36 years later, there had been 120-some manned flights in between there. We'd gotten over the, the newness of flight, and the whole purpose had shifted around to basic research. I'd been through two wars when I got to Senate, World War II and, and Korea. Wars are bad enough. I couldn't imagine how much more horrible it would be if you had a nuclear war. So I think it's fair to say I became a leader in that area in 1978 then passed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Act of 78, which was my legislation. It's still on the books to this day. The most important day, though, is the day you're sworn in, you realize you're really there. Harry Truman said the first day he was in the Senate, he couldn't believe he was there. And after he'd been there six months, he couldn't understand how all those other guys got there. <laughs> Our motto here of uh, inspire citizenship and develop leadership is one we're working on. And we hope to expand to more and more students, so that's gratifying. If we have people that are, are inspired in citizenship enough that they want to provide leadership, it doesn't mean everybody has to run for public office, but it does mean that everybody has the responsibility, if they're going to be good citizens of this country, to be active and be active in politics and interest in government and take a part in the decision-making processes. And if, if we're going to lead the world, it's going to come because we're better educated and do better research than anybody else in this world. And we've stood as a pillar for those things. We've stood as a pillar and example of, uh, of what can happen uh, if people have a democracy and work together. The amount of attention that we had was sort of overwhelming. It was unbelievable. The kids adapted well to this, and I think the whole family sort of kept its feet on the ground pretty well. And we've been very, very lucky and very fortunate and uh, feel we've had many opportunities that we're thankful for.